Global warming, take a look at that picture of central London. Look out your window if you are in Britain, as they tell us about this baking hot summer in the United Kingdom. Not likely, according to the vast majority of British people. We in the Workers' Party have demanded a referendum in Britain on whether or not to continue the commitment to a net zero economy by 2050. And the signs are that everyone from Lawrence Fox and Tony Blair are backing the central demand of ours that this net zero scam will basically condemn the British economy and British people to a cold penury for no good reason. And that's why I'm running this poll this evening. Is the global warming net zero cult a scam? You can answer yes or no on my Twitter, on my Telegram, t.me forward slash George Galloway, on the YouTube community poll and on the YouTube stream that many of you are watching now. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so and like the show if indeed you do like it. And I'm confident that you're going to like it tonight. We have a panel almost like no other. And we have pretty good panels. Well, the Kiev regime has landed bombs on the financial district in the center of Moscow. As Ambassador Craig Murray put it on Twitter just a few minutes ago, whilst that may be legal, it's definitely not wise. And the Russian response is likely to be very robust indeed. In the last 48 hours, the Kiev regime has bombed a museum and coffee shop in Rostov and now landing drones, explosive suicide kamikaze drones in the center of Moscow. It will not be long before we see the Russian response. The much vaunted Ukrainian counter-offensive, first designated for the spring and then the summer, hasn't really got off the ground. So a resort to spectacular acts of what many would call individual acts of terrorism is the next, perhaps the last throw of the dice for the Kiev regime. But the course of the war now seems set and its ending will either be at a negotiated table or it will be on the battlefield. Either way, it will not stop, I am sure, until the aims of the special military operation have been achieved. And those aims, of course, have expanded as the atrocity like the one committed in Moscow in the last few hours continue to rain down. If the special military operation had stopped when it could have stopped just a month or two into it, if it was not scuppered by Boris Johnson at the behest of Joe Biden, then the terms of the settlement might have been entirely palatable for the vast majority of Ukrainian citizens. Now, after 522 days, the terms of the settlement will be much more condign and will surely include the liberation of Odessa, the land locking of the stump state of Western Ukraine by the taking of the entire southern Black Sea coastline of Ukraine and the liberation of the ethnically Russian people of Transnistria. And that includes the Russian jewel of Odessa. Odessa is a very fascinating place. I've been studying it quite substantially just in the last few days. Do you know that in 1941, when the Nazi and Romanian armed forces occupied Odessa as part of Operation Barbarossa in 1941, there were more than 150,000 Jews living in Odessa. It was a Russian Jewish city. By the time the Red Army liberated Odessa in 1944, there were fewer than 5,000 
thousand Jews left in the city. I don't need to spell out to you what happened to all the others. In fact, this lash up of Japan and Germany and Italy and Romania in this current war against Russia is so redolent of historic significance. It is amazing that not a single commentator, academic, still less member of the British Parliament or any of the other parliaments in Western Europe at least, can even bring themselves to comment on it. The idea that Russia is now confronted with precisely the same state alliance, axis we used to call it, is so obscene, so grotesque, you would have thought that it would have entered the discourse of any sensible person considering the potential course and outcome of this war in Ukraine. But it does not. Romania is now one of the principal bases for the NATO attack on Russia, which is clearly intending to break up, to balkanize, to fragment the Russian Federation. Nobody mentions that it was the German Reich with their Romanian allies who committed such atrocities in the Holocaust in the East. But then how could they mention it? How could we justify recreating the axis that caused the deaths of 26 million people in Russia and the wider Soviet Union in the years 1941 to 1945. Best that we sweep that under the carpet. Well, Russia will respond, I've no doubt, to the Rostov and Moscow attacks, maybe even while we are on the air. And if they do, we'll bring these developments to you. But let me turn my attention to Washington. The circus around the Hunter Biden, Joe Biden affair sure ain't funny. It's true there are many clowns in play in that circus, but the story they are bringing us is dark indeed. Just ponder this. Why did Barack Obama allow Joe Biden complete control over America's Ukraine policy when he was the vice president? Unless there are no intelligence services in the United States, they must have known and told President Obama everything that Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and the Biden crime family were doing in Ukraine. But Barack Obama allowed it to continue. And what has it now brought us? It has brought us the corruption, final corruption, of the American Republic itself. The Russiagate hoax, which was in part predicated on the United States' deceitful entanglement in Ukraine the impeachment of President Trump for demanding answers to what the Bidens were doing in Ukraine, the corruption of the American justice system that we have seen played out this week in the attempt to hoodwink a federal judge into granting immunity to Hunter Biden into crimes far more serious than the ones that he intended to plead guilty to. The corruption of the First Amendment of the American Constitution. They would not have had to corrupt the social media companies. They didn't have to do much work to do so. It's true, the door was open, but they corrupted the First Amendment of the American Constitution itself by a state corporate lash up to conspire against the freedom of speech, thought, even assembly of the American people, guaranteed under the First Amendment to the Constitution. 
And not only has it begotten this total corruption of American democracy, it has begotten a war with the Russian Federation, which could turn out to be World War III, all to cover up Joe Biden's crimes in the Ukraine, all to cover up the corrupt nexus of the Biden crime family, the Ukrainian oligarchs, and the succession of Ukrainian puppet politicians. It doesn't get much more serious than all of that. It's a big question why the American public are putting up with that. But it's a bigger question why the European governments on our behalf are going along with it. It's one thing, your sons dying for Kupiansk and what side of the line it's going to be. It's another thing doing so under the leadership of Joe Biden and Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi, a collection of gerontocratic leaders that make Chernenko and Brezhnev look like mere striplings. People who have mental health episodes on screen at a press conference are leading the governments of the once proud continent of Europe over a cliff for American interests, self-harming, maybe even committing economic and political suicide in our own countries to follow the diktat of Joe Biden. Meanwhile, Russia and China, for that matter, are going from strength to strength. They are demonstrating daily the tectonic shift in the plates. They are demonstrating daily the new friends and the consolidation of old with new friends that are lining up alongside them. Putin called an Africa summit in St. Petersburg this week. It was attended by 49 countries, heads of state, deputy heads of state. Thousands of delegates from Africa were in Russia. They weren't in London, and they certainly weren't in Paris, about which more in a moment. When President Putin reeled off the list of African heroes, Patrice Lumumba, Kenneth Kaunda, Joseph Nayere, Nelson Mandela, Kwame Nkrumah. He was rolling off a list. Gamal Abdel Nasser of Egypt. He was rolling off a list of Russia's closest historical allies on the continent of Africa. People that Russia supported and the West murdered or overthrew, subverted conspired against, destroyed. Do you see where I'm going here? These old friends of Russia are joined by new friends, like the magnificent 35-year-old president of Burkina Faso, a man so powerful and eloquent and handsome. Well, he made Mitch McConnell look well, like a fossil. And when the president of Burkina Faso said no one should pity a slave who does not rebel, this resounded through the African continent. And he called on the African countries to have some dignity to stand up for themselves and to stand with those countries that stood with them, rather than the countries that did everything they could to enslave, enchain, and bind forever in economic slavery, the countries of Africa. 
And the African people overwhelmingly believe that. And no sooner was the summit ended, but a case in point was demonstrated. The corrupt puppet regime in Niger, uranium rich Niger, was overthrown by a movement of its own people and its own armed forces. Nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with the United States. Nothing to do with France. 80% of every light in Paris this evening is lit by the resources of the people of Niger. But only 20% of the people of Niger have even got electricity. You'd think the French would be too embarrassed to comment. But they're not just commenting. Little Macron, I was going to call him Little Napoleon, but he doesn't deserve to be in the same sentence as Napoleon. Little Macron has threatened the people of Niger to reinstate their puppet president so he can continue to loot the country in the interests of France. And Anthony Blinken has backed him. Anthony Blinken demanded the reinstatement of the corrupt puppet president of Niger. I mean, I don't want to swear on air. But who is Anthony Blinken to decide who rules Niger? And if you were in any doubt as to whose benefit and disbenefit this overthrow of the Niger government might be, you already know the answer in the attitude of France and the attitude of the United States to the coup. So I know nothing about the new leadership in Niger, but they're all right by me if they can make Macron and Blinken so very, very angry. We'll be talking about these shifting tectonic plates and about one of the most surprising turns of events, the coming of North Korea, the DPRK, and its leader, Kim Jong-un, in from the cold. You never thought you'd hear me say that, did you? Fasten your seatbelts. It's the mother of all talk shows.